All right, so today I want to cover the top 10 pros and cons of keeping a snake as a pet. And let me tell you, if you're keeping a snake as a pet, you probably think this is absolutely the best pet in the whole entire world. But let me tell you, there are some cons associated with keeping a pet snake. I'm going to cover those in this video, show you some of the positive sides and some of the negative sides of keeping a snake as a pet. All right, so probably the number one thing that I really like about keeping snakes as a pet is that they can live for over 30 years. Like this ball python around my neck, this is Bobby here. He is about six years old. And just to think that he can live for 30 to 40 years is pretty amazing. I've heard records of ball pythons living over 40 years. And I would say pretty much the average as far as most people are concerned, ball pythons can live for an average of about 30 years. Some snakes live a little bit shorter lives, but I would say if you compare it to like a dog and a cat that's probably one of the most frustrating things I find with dogs and cats is they only live for you know anywhere from 7 to about 15 years I actually have a St. Bernard a male St. Bernard he is really big a really huge dog and unfortunately St. Bernard's only live for about seven or eight years it's a really short lifespan and let me tell you once you get attached to those animals it's really difficult to watch them get old and pass away especially if you're kind of older like I am I've had multiple dogs and you're watching your dogs you know grow old and die after one dog after another after another it's really heartbreaking as a matter of fact there's a lot of people that kind of get you know a little bit older later in their life and they've had so many dogs that die of old age they decide I'm not gonna get another dog because the lifespan is just too short and if you get a pet snake you can actually have that snake for most of your life as a matter of fact for Bobby here I'll probably will Bobby to the next person that comes after me this snake can live for a really long time all right, so the number one con associated with snakes is that they are cold-blooded and they need a heat source. So if you have like a dog or a cat or anything, you're not gonna actually run up the electric bill trying to keep them warm full-time. They pretty much have a variety of temperatures that they can live at, but for snakes, you really need a controlled heat source in your enclosure. You have to pretty much control their heat pretty much full-time. You really can't just keep them at ambient temperature. There are some snakes that are little bit more tolerant to it but I'd say as far as ball pythons you pretty much need like a 90 degree hot spot and probably room temperature lows of about 75. All right, so the number two pro that comes with owning a pet snake, the number two advantage, that would be that they only eat once a week. And let me tell you, if you start getting into snakes and you buy your first snake, it's, it's pretty eye-opening how little food they actually need. And as a matter of fact, when I had my first ball of pythons, I put them in these tubs behind me, and I kept opening them up every few days thinking, is he okay in there for so long without any food? It's pretty amazing. And you compare that to like my three big dogs outside, I'm always outside feeding the dogs every morning and every night. And not only is it a lot less expensive, but it is a lot less time consuming. And I would say it's a minimal commitment as far as kind of taking up your free time. With a dog, you're always out there feeding and cleaning all the time. And it seems like with a snake, you have a lot of free time. It's a minimal commitment. It's amazing. They only eat once a week. All right, so the number two con when it comes to snakes, the number two disadvantage, and I would say this pretty much does most people in and keeps them from getting a pet snake, and that is the fear of snakes. There's a lot of people that are really terrified of snakes. So if you're thinking of getting any kind of a snake, whether it be a ball python or any other type of snake, let me tell you, you probably should clear it with your family and friends first. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people now that won't come over to my house because I have snakes in the house and there's a lot of people that have kind of a little bit of a fear and hesitation they'll come into my dining room and sit down for a meal but they definitely won't come into my snake room some people are completely terrified and they won't go anywhere near your house if you actually have snakes in the house all right, so the number three pro when it comes to snakes, I would say this is probably my favorite one, is that most snakes, I'd say in most cases, they are a hands-on animal where you can actually touch them and hold them and play with them. And if you have a really tame snake like Bobby here, this is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. He is super tame. You can do pretty much whatever you want with Bobby. You can like hold him. You can put his face right in the camera. He is not head shy at all. He is super 
super friendly snake. And if you actually get a snake that is like this, let me tell you, you will change your mind about being afraid of snakes. They are pretty awesome animals. And I would say it really depends on the type of snake. There's some snakes you definitely don't want to handle, which would be like the venomous. Sometimes uh, some of the arboreal species like the green tree pythons are usually considered, you know, kind of a display animal. Some of the bigger animals like the reticulated pythons probably wouldn't want to actually handle one by yourself. You need a couple people. I would say it's not really like an everyday kind of a handling snake, but I'd say in most cases, the pet snakes that you'd find pretty much at any pet store are really hands-on animal. All right, so the number three con when it comes to snakes, I would say it is probably one of the most difficult things to find a really good veterinarian when it comes to snakes. Let me tell you, there's a lot of veterinarians out there, but there's not a lot that are really good in dealing with snake, especially like snake emergencies and stuff like that. And as a matter of fact, I kind of lucked into my veterinary. Actually, I was vending at a reptile show and I had a snake that had kind of a, a problem with the navel and I showed it to one of the veterinarians there and she actually came over and pulled out this little tiny like almost like a blockage right in the navel area and pulled out this huge mass of uh, it was, was kind of weird you know I would have never thought to actually pull that out didn't know if it was going to hurt my snake or not and she just came right over and pulled it out and I was kind of freaking out and let me tell you a really good vet can do some amazing things with your snake that you wouldn't normally otherwise think of if you're trying to treat your own snakes. All right, so the number four pro when it comes to snakes, and let me tell you, this one your neighbor is going to thank you for, especially if you live in an apartment, and that is snakes are completely silent. They don't make any noise at all. It's pretty amazing. In this room right here, I have over 100 ball pythons in this room, and there's not one peep coming out of any of these snakes. Occasionally, you'll hear a little bit of a squeak here and there from some of the rodents in the tubs, but I'd say even the rodents, for the most part, are pretty silent in most cases. Cases. But as far as snakes, you will never hear a peep out of any of your snakes. They are completely silent. All right, so the number four con when it comes to snakes is that they can be escape artists. And let me tell you, if you don't have a really good enclosure, the snake can get out of the tiniest little hole in your enclosure. As a matter of fact, I actually had a really small little California king snake. I put it in one of these tubs behind me and it was just a little hatchling, thinner than a pencil, and it actually got out and I lost it for good. It's been a couple years. Still haven't found that snake. I'm thinking it probably went in the heating vent somewhere and it's just completely disappeared. And let me tell you, if you lose a snake in your house, it could be extremely difficult to find it because they can get into the smallest places and just pretty much disappear. And a lot of times you won't find them again. It's pretty amazing. So I'd say that's probably one of the biggest cons. You want to make sure you have a really good enclosure. Snakes can be escape artists. All right, so the number five pro when it comes to snakes, and that is that they are hypoallergenic, meaning if you have allergies and you're allergic to dogs and cats, you probably won't be allergic to snakes. So essentially, when you're allergic to something, usually it comes from the fur and the dander that is released from the, the fur of the animal. It kind of gets into the air, and that's what makes your eyes turn red and you're sneezing all the time. And let me tell you, with snakes, they are completely hypogenic. There's nothing on the snake that you can cause you to have an allergic reaction. All right, so the number five con when it comes to snakes, that is they can be extremely dangerous. And I think this is where most people, when they have a fear of snakes, they really don't know the good snakes from the bad snakes. A lot of people are thinking, all right, if I get bit by that snake, it could be venomous and I could potentially die from that snake. And that's nothing could be further from the truth, especially if you're working with some of these non-venomous snakes, especially with ball pythons. You know, I've been bit a lot of times, never even had any kind of a swell or any after effects from any kind of a bite. It's, they're pretty much considered a harmless reptile. But let me tell you, if you have the wrong snakes, especially if you get into venomous or you get into some of the really large constrictors, they can be extremely dangerous. 
All right, so the number six pro when it comes to snakes is that they don't need any shots or vaccinations. And let me tell you, that is big, especially for a breeder. I actually bred, uh, had a couple litters of puppies when I was breeding my dogs. Uh, just kind of dabbled in dogs a little bit. Probably won't breed them again. But let me tell you, that was the one thing that really broke the bank <laughs> is when you're trying to make ends meet, you're feeding those puppies, they're eating a lot, and then you have to bring them to the vet on a regular schedule and get all the shots and the vaccinations. And let me tell you, when it comes to snakes, there's no shots or vaccinations except when maybe your snake gets sick and you bring it to the vet. They may give it a shot of antibiotics or something like that. But as far as vaccinations, you don't really need to give your snakes any shots. All right, so the number six con associated with keeping a pet snake, and I would say that is you need to keep a supply of frozen rodents. And I would say you probably don't want to put the frozen rodents next to your pizza or your ice cream. As a matter of fact, if you have some family members digging through the freezer and they run into something like that, they might freak out a little bit. What I would actually suggest is getting a separate freezer just for your rodents. But let me tell you, if you just have one pet snake and you're looking to pop a few rodents in the freezer, that can definitely be kind Kind of disturbing for some of your other family members. All right, so the number seven pro when it comes to keeping a pit snake is that you don't have to train them. You don't have to walk them every day. You don't have to potty train them. You don't have to do any of that stuff that you normally would do with like a dog or a cat. It is really extremely easy to just buy a snake. No training at all. It pretty much hands off. You don't have to do much at all. It's a really low maintenance animal. You don't have to train your snake. All right, so the number seven con is that some snakes can be extremely picky eaters. And I would say when people think of picky eaters, most people think of ball pythons. And I would say that's probably why some people don't get ball pythons versus other snakes. I would say a lot of other snakes eat more readily on a routine basis. And you know, I keep and breed ball pythons here, so for me, it's really no big deal. A lot of times, ball pythons will go on a fast for months at a time, and it's pretty much expected. I know a lot of people really panic over their snake not eating. As a matter of fact, I just saw a comment the other day under one of my videos, and someone was saying, my snake hasn't eaten in two weeks. They were just panicking and freaking out. And let me tell you, with a ball python, not eating for two weeks is completely normal. No big deal at all. They can go for months and months without eating without really any ill effect to the animal which is pretty amazing and I would say as far as as far as probably the number one thing that really bothers people I would say that is their snake not eating for a really long time so the number eight pro when it comes to pet snakes, I would say that snakes come in a really wide variety of sizes and colors and patterns. And you can pretty much get almost any size snake you want. You know, some snakes stay really, really super tiny, almost as big as a worm. And then some snakes get really big, like hundreds of pounds. And I would say the ball python is probably the number one pet snake because it's big enough to say, hey, that is a really <laughs> impressive snake, but it doesn't get too big for one person to handle, which is kind of the advantage of ball pythons. So I'd say if you're looking for a pet snake, no matter the size or the color or the temperament, there is a snake for you. All right, so the number eight con when it comes to snakes is that they say snakes can actually carry salmonella. And if you, you pretty much go to any reptile show and they actually have a form there that you can have to sign, especially when you're handling the snakes or if you buy a snake. And that is the acknowledgement that snakes can carry salmonella. And salmonella can be really dangerous if you're, you know, for the really elderly or for children under the age of five. Usually they recommend that, you know, if you have kids under the age of five, that they don't actually handle snakes because of the salmonella. However, I've been handling snakes for quite a few years and I've never had salmonella. As a matter of fact, out of all the breeders that I've ever heard of, I haven't heard of one ever contracting salmonella. No, no one's ever gotten sick from salmonella. And the funny thing is, is that I've actually heard that you're more likely to get salmonella from chickens. So if you actually have like a pet chicken or a pet duck or something like that, you have a higher risk of of getting salmonella. As a matter of fact, you can get salmonella from your dog or your cat or even from another person if you actually have salmonella floating around. So I would say the risk of salmonella, as far as what I'm seeing, it's from, you know, it's pretty much based on experience, is extremely low, although you can get salmonella from your pet snake. 
All right, so the number nine pro when it comes to snakes is that snakes don't really get attached to their owner like a dog or a cat. So <laughs> I haven't really tested this theory that much, but I would say if I gave you Bobby here, this bamboo ball python around my neck, this snake would act just as friendly towards you than it would towards me, which is kind of interesting. They don't really get attached where, you know, you have your, your dog that gets really attached to you and it's pretty much, you know, your dog, there's that bond between you and your dog. You give it to someone else and it doesn't quite have the same bond or you get attacked from that dog because it doesn't really recognize you. It's not really the same with snakes. So for example, if you really tame down a snake like Bobby here, it's pretty much tame for everyone. All right, so the number nine con when it comes to snakes is that there's only one thing on the menu, they eat rodents. And let me tell you, I've you know really showed how friendly ball pythons can be, showed Bobby to quite a few people, and a lot of people are like, there's no way that I can actually take a rat and take it out of the freezer, thaw it out, and feed it to that snake. That is one hurdle that a lot of people just can't overcome when it comes to the actual food source that you're feeding a snake. As a matter of fact, there's some snakes that will eat other things like garter snakes can actually eat fish in some cases and you know some of the reticulated pythons will actually eat birds and then the really big reticulated pythons will eat like pigs and goats and stuff like that but I'd say in most cases most snakes actually have to eat rats or mice. So the number 10 pro when it comes to pet snakes is that you don't need a pet sitter when you go on vacation. Probably the biggest thing, you know, especially if you like to travel a lot, you can probably put your snake in the enclosure with no food. Just make sure it has water. You could probably go for two weeks without food on that snake. It's pretty amazing. Snakes don't need a pet sitter when you go on vacation. All right, so the number 10 con when it comes to snakes is that you really can't teach them to do much of anything. You can't teach them to sit or fetch or anything like that. Although I have seen one snake that was trained. It was pretty amazing. I think it was, I'm not sure what species it was. It was a venomous snake at a zoo and they actually trained the snake that when the waterfall came on, they turn on a little waterfall at one end of the enclosure, the snake would actually go into a little box and then they just close up the box, Move the, the snake in the box to clean the enclosure and then put it back in. But that is the only time I have ever seen anyone actually train a snake to do anything. Pretty much across the board, you really can't train a snake to do tricks. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Free Fire Fan asks, if I live in hot country, do I still need a heat mat? And that is a very good question. I'd say it depends on the temperature of your reptile room. As a matter of fact, I was thinking at one point, wouldn't it be cool to have my entire reptile collection here if I could actually have no heat mats and don't even have incubators? And essentially what I could do is I could keep my room at 90 degrees because that is the temperature of the incubator. It's the same temperature as the hot spot. So if you actually had your room at 90 degrees, and pretty much cover everything. You could just almost leave your eggs right in with the snake. And if I cranked up the humidity to where I had like, you know, 70 or 80% humidity, 90 degrees in here, it would be pretty awesome. Now, I wouldn't even need an incubator. It wouldn't need any hot spots. The only problem is I don't know if I could withstand it myself working in a 90 degree room at 80% humidity. It'd be perfect for the snakes, but it would be pretty uncomfortable for me. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.